And hello and welcome if you've just joined us on ICE Live 365. We're down here in the eSports arena. You can see the tournament and competitions taking place behind me. We'll come to that in a second. But I'm very pleased to be joined now by a man who's established himself as a strategic marketeer of note with a range of multi-billion dollar uh, businesses. Sony has built up a 25-year career around uh, himself, building and implementing strategies that transform brands. For over half of that career, he's leveraged his corporate experience to drive growth in SMEs and early growth organizations. And Sonny, well, he's with us now. Welcome to uh, Ice Live 365. Thank you very much. You make me sound more impressive than I really am. <laughs> but thank you. I like the introduction. Whoever supplied the scripts, give them a million dollars. I will give them a very good bonus, trust me. <laughs> So, Sonny, thanks for joining us today. Uh, we'll talk about what's going on behind us in a second, but um, you've obviously held over the years quite a number of high-profile gambling jobs. Um, this is very different. It's eSports. How did you get into this? What was the transformation for you? Um, it was an odd conversation that happened over some drinks, as the best conversations usually are, and I was approached to run an eSports organization headquartered out of Hong Kong did a bit of due diligence, looked at the marketplace and turned the job down, but said, look, if you're not doing anything with it, I'll take it over. You could see very clearly on, this was about four years ago, that eSports was going to be explosive. It had grown rapidly for the 10 years prior to that, but it was on the cusp of going, you know, they call the hockey curve stick, where it just rockets sky high. And it just happened to be at that time. And I thought, this is too good to miss, an opportunity to miss. So. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. So uh, talk us through then, you took over the organisation. Yeah. Um, you, there's lots of work to be done when that happens. How did you, first of all, to do the taking over and then evolving that organisation? Well, the first thing you do when you take over a business is just run through the weeds, see what's worth keeping, see what's worth divesting of. There were a couple of brands underneath the organisation, got rid of a few, focused on Vex Gaming, that had the community base, that had the fan base, that had the talent in there, and the idea was doubling down on that. Then it was about the strategic move. How do you stand out in a crowd which is growing so rapidly and there's a lot of noise? The reality is winning is hard, especially if you want to do it all the time. But what we have as a brand is a very big, powerful and loyal fan base. And they can be capitalized on through sponsorships and marketing. So it's being able to put together a strategy that enabled us to take the power of esports to brands who couldn't really tap into that marketplace. And over that period of time, what would you say were the, um, the biggest humps in the road that you found? <laughs> Well, you don't take over a business you know, six months before COVID lockdown, and that was our biggest hump. We were trying to go to the market for venture capital funding, literally as the market's all shut down. So to be really honest, what we've had to do is go and survive. We've been really lucky is that through a period of two years of companies going bankrupt and closing down, we've doubled our revenues. We've proven that we can engage with markets that brands like. We've got a brand that the audience like to engage with. Now the biggest hump is, how do we get investment into the business to take us from where we are to the next big stage, which is going to be a top 10 team in the world? And we talk about the humps, obviously you have a great team with you as well. We do indeed. You know, that teamwork has, has paid dividends, hasn't it? Oh God, completely. I mean, esports is, people think of esports as being quite insular and solo, but it's not. It's a team sport, both with the people who are playing together, but there's people who are supporting them in terms of the casting and the hosting, but behind the scenes, the marketing, the technology, the travel, the planning, all of that stuff comes into place. And I'm really proud to say that we've got a phenomenal team in, with Vex. They know what they're doing, but they're very passionate about what's going on. It's great to see the tournament happening here, and I know you can play some risk-free bets over there, which we might do when we finish. <laughs> you should do. <laughs> but but really, bet, bet on red, that's vexed. Okay. Oh, is that the best advice that's you can offer, Sonny? Good you grief. Mean, yeah. But how does gambling fit into the eSports um, ecosystem? I think there are two fundamental ways. The first thing is the next audience for gambling are eSports generation, the gaming generation. So you've got to reach out to them. So starting to get involved with esports and understanding that generation, how they talk to, how they engage with themselves is very important. Also getting your brand in front of them. You know, sponsoring teams like us and any other team helps you build a brand reputation with them. The second thing is esports is becoming well, it is the fastest growing sport on the planet. It is going to be a major contributor to revenues in sports book. There's no question about it. So getting involved early, cultivating that, and starting to build your proposition from the outset 
gives you the best position for a long-term gambling market. And we're looking at that growth and the integration into the regular, let's call it the regular sporting calendar. Yeah. Do you see that the eSports calendar will be as big as and integrated with things like the Olympics and the World Cup? Yeah. So we are very lucky that this year is the Commonwealth Games out of Birmingham. And so Team England is actually being managed by Vex Gaming. So our Chief Gaming Officer, Mark Weller, is going to be managing them. He also manages on his sideline Team Britain very, very busy man. But what you're starting to see by having esports coming into the Commonwealth Games, that's a forerunner for it being part of the Olympic Games. Now, if you were to look at traditional sports, if you look at the audience under about 27 to 30 years old, esports gets a significantly larger audience for that age group than traditional sports. So this is going to be the future. It probably won't compete head to head, but it will be absorbed into these type of larger organizations and it will create a new paradigm for sports. And that new paradigm, obviously, it's going at pace. Oh, God, yeah. But let's look at the, within the next two years. What do you see on the horizon? Crystal ball time. The next two years, esports will be in the Olympics. That's probably three years, if I'm not mistaken. It's three years, so forgive me on that close one. Enough. Close enough on that one. Um, but it will be on broadcast media much more heavily. I think the gambling op operators are going to start taking odds on uh, certain tournaments in place. But what you're going to see is that it's actually going to move out of its core gaming base and it's going to start building up a wider community of fans. I think that will start happening in the next two years. The other thing that's going to happen is that prize money is going to grow exponentially. There's going to be a huge boost in that and what you're going to see is a larger, more traditional sports audience getting excited by esports. Sonny, thank you very much indeed. An absolute pleasure, Andy. And my top tip today from Sonny, always bet on red. Always bet on red. That's what, <laughs> if you lose, please don't come looking for me.